keep saying that I want to do therapy because I've been in situations that I feel like uh, a, a girl should, you know, shouldn't be in. Not just street stuff, but I didn't have somebody physically die on top of me trying to save my life. You know what I'm saying? So, and I and I've never like said it or spoke it out loud. Um, only to my best friend who was in the car with me. One to ten. What's your mental state right now? As of today? Seven. What's a seven? That's real close to 10. What does seven look like? A seven for me is like, not at my best, but I'm not at my worst. Like mentally. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got like a whole bunch of stuff on my mind, but it doesn't hinder me from doing what I got to do throughout the day. Do you just shut off? You just shut, you just block that off and don't deal with it? The thing, you get what I'm saying? The Definitely. stuff you say and you're going through, do you just shut that off and never deal with it? And just go through your day? I do, but I, I think that's just how I am and who I am anyways. Like if, I, if I'm if i going through something, if you're not really close to me, you couldn't tell. Like, you know, I still, I could be smiling at you, but be thinking, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I got a face, it's a face, yeah. so. A lot of people don't know what I be going through or can't tell what I be going through because I don't like putting or projecting how I'm feeling off on everybody else or anybody else. Mm. So I bury a lot of stuff. I don't speak on a lot of stuff. And at this point in your life, you feel like that's healthy? No, not at all. I'm actually in a space where I feel like I am healing, recognizing like flaws and stuff that I do and stuff that shit, I mean, stuff that affects me on a day-to-day basis for real because with past trauma, old stuff, like I bury it. I don't think, I don't address it. I just let it go. But if if something's happening in my life and it just keep building up, I burst and then everything come out. And I know that now, where I'm at right now, I know that and I know it's not healthy. Yeah. So we, we, we know where we are right now. Yeah. We know where, I believe you know where you're trying to be. So acknowledging a lot of that stuff is good. Yeah. You start, you you know, but let's go way back, mm-hmm. way back to where. How was your household like? What was? How were you raised? Uh, my grandma raised me. So um, my mom was around, but she was young when she had me and my siblings. So my grandma and my grandpa took me, my sister, and my brother in. Um, I have two other brothers and a sister. Um, My brother stayed with my mom and my sister, which I just found out I had and met. Yeah, she she was adopted, so. Wait, because I know one of your sisters. I know one of your sisters. You just recently found out you had another sister. That's crazy. I just, I feel like I just heard this not too long ago. <laughs> well, how you feel about that first? When we'll go back to your childhood right now. How you feel about knowing you got another sibling? It was like I always knew that I had a sibling, but the stories that I heard, it was like um, she was born mentally challenged and she was in a facility to where that was the best care for her. That was what I knew growing yeah. up. Oh, God. Okay. But it's the total opposite. She's healthy. She's fine. She's married. She has kids. She has a great profession. Like, so it was, it was, it was messed up to me because I feel like I was robbed. Of, yeah. a, of a relationship with my sister. So starting in our 30s, trying to rebuild that, it's like, 
I know she feels some type of way and I feel some type of way, but it also goes back to my childhood where I felt some type of way because I was with my grandma and not my mom's. So mm -hmm. it's, it, it feel like a, a repeated cycle sometimes. I know that had to cause a lot of confusion. No, it In did. your head, like, what, what, what y'all lie about this for? It did because it was one of them things that she found us on Facebook. Like, she reached out she, she reached found out. us on Facebook. Yeah. So then it was like, now I got questions. You know what I'm saying? Now I have questions for my mom. You know what I'm saying? And then we just getting into a space. You know what I'm saying? We just get into a space to where we are good. Mm -hmm. And then this come, and then it's a whole nother person that I know what she's going through. I know what she's thinking. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and I'm and i her big sister, so I immediately jump in and try to like help her cope with it or help her understand it, because I was there. I know, you know what I'm saying? I know the questions she got. I know everything she, not everything she going through, but just like, damn, I got a whole nother family. You know what I'm saying? I got all these siblings I know about, like a mom. So, I mean, I'm just, even though it's a it, it's a problem for me, I, I'm i trying to be the big sister and help her get through it. You know mm. what I'm saying? And uh, like I said, it, it just happened recently. Like I knew about her, but I didn't know about her. Does she have other siblings besides y'all? Um, on her side, her adopted side, I think she got like sisters or brothers, but I'm not sure. But biologically, it's my oldest brother that passed, then it's me, then it's my sister, then it's her, and then it's my two little brothers. So I only ask that because that's, that's, that's a whole nother problem for her because she like, Yo, I got real, not, not to take anything away from her adopted. Right. I mean, the family she was adopted into, but what makes me any different than them? Right, yeah. And you can cope with that because you like, why they get to grow up in the house with their parents, but I got to grow with my grandma. Not to say that you were mad at your grandma or right. anything. But, but that's question. why that's why I say I understand. I can't under, I put myself in her place because I was there, so I know. Her frustrations. Yeah. How was, did you, were you able to, did you and your mama have any type of relationship when you were a kid growing up in your grandma? Yeah, we had a relationship, but it was one of them cool mom type of, you know what I'm saying? It was like, I knew where she was, you know what I'm saying? I knew who she was, but it was like, I can go get away, with, you know what I'm saying? I, if I'm getting into it with some girls at school, you mm. know what I'm saying, or somebody trying to jump me, I know she gonna pull up. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I'm in trouble, call my mama, cause I know she was more lax. I don't. I mean, I can't say it's because she just wanted to have a bond or just be the cool mom because she wasn't raising us. But yeah, I, I mean, now as an adult, me and her relationship is a lot better, cause I can. I can understand that now as an adult, but back then I didn't understand it. Yeah. So we bumped heads a lot. Yeah. Going back to your, what was your relationship like with your siblings? So my grandma raised my brother Dominique, me, and my sister Fabiana um, in the same household. Like my brother, Here we go. <laughs> nah, but my brother, he was everything. Like, I didn't have a daddy growing up and uh, my grandpa passed. So my big brother, he was everything to me. Like, he was popular, he could dance, he was funny, he had the girls. So I looked up to him and he was like my protector. Like I knew nobody was gonna mess with me because of him. So we were tight, we were close. And then my sister, 
it's always been a love hate relationship with me and her. That's my little sister, but she's stubborn and she hard headed. So we clash a lot because she feel like she's the big sister when she's the little <laughs> sister. Mm-hmm. So um, we clash a lot, but we still like can't nobody. That's my sister. Like can't nobody talk about her or do nothing or none of that. Cause I'm a, you know, what I'm saying I'm gonna do what I gotta do as a big sister. But yeah, we grew up. We grew up in a church every Sunday. Uh, a lot of my siblings, uh, my cousins, like we grew up close, spending night at each other's houses, um, going to church every Sunday and every activity. Like my grandma, that's my mama. I call her my mama. Like mm-hmm. my grandma, she she did her thing. Like she installed in us what. Then I thought it was strict, but now I know it was very needed. Yeah. How much older than you was Dominic? Yeah. Dominic. He was uh, two and a half years older than me. Mm-hmm. What age did he pass away? He was 18, 17, 18 years old when he passed. Uh, it was uh, St. Patrick's Day and uh, him and his uh, friend Keelan, they went uh, out on the plaza to the bars or, you know, just out. And um, it was a checkpoint uh, right down on the plaza. It was a checkpoint. And I guess they had been, I'm pretty sure they had been drinking. And to avoid the checkpoint, um, Keelan did a, you know, one of them quick spins to get, you know, get not to avoid the checkpoint and they ended up crashing into a pole and uh the pole was on my brother's side um and he passed away um Keelan and uh he had another friend in the car they uh survived um but yeah he died in the car wreck how was your relationship with them after that Keelan and them uh like the Keelan was like my big brother too. Yeah. So even after that, when uh when it came down to seriousness with they trying to charge him for manslaughter and all that, like we still stood and was like, nah, that's his friend. That's his best friend. Like we yeah. knew he didn't mean to do that. Yeah. Like we ain't trying to we ain't trying to do that. Yeah. But ultimately he did go to jail, which was unfortunate. He caught uh pneumonia and died in prison. So essentially, it's two brother. Yep. Your uh, father in your life, like you said. Nah, my uh, my dad passed away when I was still in my my mama's stomach. Like she was actually there, pregnant with me, when my daddy got killed. He got killed. He got killed. He got murdered. Yep. Shot. Due to the streets. Yep. I mean, the stories that I heard, he was he was. He was that nigga. Yeah. So he got caught up in the street shit. And uh, he paid for it. So I've never known my dad. Um, And just in my teens that I reconnect with my daddy's side of the family. So I don't know everybody, but I'm slowly getting to know people. I got key players that I know, like my uncles, um, my cousin, uh, cousins and stuff like that. But every day or every week, you know, I'm hearing, this your cousin, this your cousin, this your cousin, you know, on your daddy's side, but I don't know everybody. Yeah. Is Keith and them on your daddy? No, Keith is on my on my grandma's side. Like his his uh his grandma and my grandma are sisters. Yeah. So not having your father, losing something that uh, cause you say your your big brother protected you. That's I ain't gonna call him your father, but you father know, figures, yeah, it, yeah it, it's a figure like that. Where did that take you after that? Cause losing a sibling is. Um, I felt like I felt like I did go in a dark place um, in high school. Like I went in a dark place because, like, this is somebody that you with every day. You grow up with like your dependency on this person is so high and so much like you then just one day you wake up and they no longer around you know what i'm saying yeah. so 
I feel like I did go in a dark place. Um, but I was in high school, so a dark place for me would probably be going out and, you know, doing shit I wasn't supposed to be doing. Shit, I ended up pregnant. So, um, yeah, that was that was a hard pill to swallow. And I, I think to this day, that's, that it still affects me. What were some of the um, values as far as uh, how a woman should be treated? What are some of the things you learned from your brother just watching him move and stuff? Uh, my brother, he was real smooth. Like he was, he was a smooth dude. So, but if I if I took anything from him, he was smooth, but he was chill, like not confrontational. You know what I'm saying? Like he he gonna let you speak <clears throat> if he don't like it. He ain't he wasn't a rah rah type of person. He wasn't a hypey react type of person. He he was more so of thinking before acting. So I mean. In a lot of situations, I, I, uh, I do think before I act due to him. Sometimes I don't, but yeah, I think I don't know what I'm. What I'm. I don't know. Like then, when I lost him, I lost that too, though. So I was fighting. I was. I was just. I ain't give. I ain't care. Yeah. But I think about him every day. It. it Sometimes it still don't feel real, you know what I'm saying? Losing somebody that close to you. Um, but that's that's just my reality. And when I say, uh, I feel like it affects me now because I don't been through some stuff, like a lot of stuff. And I feel like my fears, my trauma, my triggers is due to the fact that I'm, I'm losing dominant key men in my life. You know what I'm saying? And I've lost other men in my life as well. So I don't, I'm not saying that I'm cursed because <clears throat> then when I was a kid, I did. I was, I didn't understand it because it's like, why are all the people so close to me keep dying? But as I got older, all it was out of my hands. I've never, I've never gotten anybody hurt in my life. Mm -hmm. I've never been a cause, none of that. But I didn't understand that then, so I was putting that on myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, what what's wrong with me? You know, what's wrong with me? What am I, what am I, but it ain't had nothing to do with me. Yeah. So now I feel like I'm afraid of losing people. I feel like that's something that I deal with. And it make you hard to, does it make it hard for you to get in a relationship? Because I know personally that you've lost people you either had a relationship with or were in relationship with yeah. a romantic relationship what I mean not just a regular relationship yeah so does it make you I remember just losing my grandma and it making it making me feel like I don't want to get close to nobody else because it hurts to lose somebody you love you're losing brothers you're losing child's father your child's father and other people you've had intimate relationships with I wouldn't say it, it all, it doesn't make me not want to get close with somebody. It just, it just makes me feel like I have to protect them. I don't know. Like, I feel like, I, I feel like I have to be around. I feel like I have to make sure they good. I feel like I have to check on them. I feel like I have to, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it could be excessive, like making sure you get home, making sure, you know what I'm saying, just little stuff, making sure you on a swoop, like you making sure you aware of your surroundings, yeah, like just, swivel. yeah, just making sure that you good. And then just even wanting to be around them, like riding around or whatever, cause I feel like I can, and I probably can't, or you know what I'm saying, in a situation, but I feel like if I'm there, then they gonna be good. Yeah. So it's it, and, and even in relationships, it's hard for me to let go because it's like if I let go, then something gonna happen. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like that's just my logic. But I know if something gonna happen, it's gonna happen. I remember talking to you a long time ago. Uh, we were having a conversation, and I think you had just lost somebody, and 
obviously it didn't happen right after we lost Mike, but we were just sitting up talking. We was at the job and I was just like, you ever feel like God trying to get your attention? Yeah. He keep taking people away from you to get your attention, yeah. like, cause he needs you. I've always noticed that like, at least from what I've seen, mm -hmm. people have gravitated towards you and followed behind you, whether it was fake or rather, you know what I'm saying? They yeah. get Jeffy, Jeffy with you. So you, I've always looked at you as somebody with some type of influence. Like yeah. you don't realize the power you may have. You just, it just feel like you're scared to take that responsibility. on. That's crazy you say that. Cause on the journey, like, I feel like, I feel like I fumbled myself. I feel like I'm not, I'm scared to live up to my real potential. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I yeah. feel like it's a it's a lot of stuff that I could and should be doing, but I feel like it's not a lack of confidence in myself. It's just, I don't know if I want to take on all the responsibilities that come with it, with a lot of stuff. And I overthink things and I think too much about things. And then the time done flew by and I'm on to something different. So yeah, I that's honestly one of the things I realized about myself. Like I know I have a lot of influence. What some people say, hood, street famous or whatever. Like a lot of people might know me, but I also I also involve myself with a, in a lot of stuff, and I'm I'm a cool person. I got when you get to know me, because a, the a lot of perspective uh, or what I hear about myself is that I'm uh, stuck up. Uh, really, I'm a gold digger. Uh, like I don't know. I just I hear a bunch of shit about myself that that's not me. Like. You got to come and get to know me. Because once you come and get to know me for yourself, you're going to realize, like, all oh, that, that was just BS. Like, you know what I'm saying? That ain't that ain't even me. That ain't her. Like, I literally, I mean, I can't even count on my hand. I don't fall out with people. I don't, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't leave no relationship with no bad feelings, no ill wills, and not, like, it's not no, no person dude or whatever that I've been with in the past, like, we ain't cool, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have no, I don't like to leave a situation with a, with a bad taste, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like a lot of people be holding on to that stuff and then that affects them moving forward mm -hmm. or, or, or in, in, in a relationship, business-wise or anything like that. Like, I like to build bridges. I like to, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you think, even just just as, just so with the club stuff, like I don't work in almost every club here, you know, bartending, bottle girl, and stuff like that. Like my relationship be so cool with everybody. Like I can literally, if I wanted to, start a club. Like I know the whole game around all of it. You talk about this ideal people have about you in their head and stuff. I, from personal experience, because I, I can't speak for you, right? But I've seen you take on stuff that wasn't yours. Okay. As far as being a protector and stuff, like I've seen women actually like rock with you, but y'all end up getting into it over either some. You've even been real patient with people. Like you, mm -hmm. you naturally a fighter, but mm -hmm. you've been patient. Like you know what I'm saying. So I don't think my I'm gonna say my experience with you or what I've seen has never been a shit starter has never been stuck. Like I said to you before, you started talking to me first. Yeah. You pulled me aside like, yo, you stuck up or something? Why you, you know, fix your face. <laughs> I think naturally I have a, a FU face. So people, people say, you know, cause I don't, I don't smell a lot. I don't, I don't smell a lot, but the, I'm not mad. You know, I just naturally got a, a face that don't, is not friendly. And But I'm a friendly person. Like I said, once you get to know me, like I, I, I laugh, I like laughing. I'm a funny person. But the perspective that I hear, the things that I hear about myself are, are false. Uh, I invite people to come and get to know me themselves. You smile a lot now. I was say then you smiled a lot. I'm a, like, I'm a, I'm, I like to laugh. I love to laugh. Yes. Like I'm a goofy person. Like I. I, I like that type of stuff, but it's just something I do have my guard up a lot. I'll be, I have my guard up a lot. I, 
I'm a type of person that I sit back and I, and I observe. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feed off other people's energy. So if I come in a room, I, well, I watch the whole room. I read the whole room. You know what I'm saying? Even when I start conversations with people, I check their temperature. I see what type of mood they are, and that's how I know how to approach them. They ain't, they ain't a good mood, I'm not going to joke and play with them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If they ain't a good mood, we're going to joke and play. We're going to have a good time. Yeah. So, yeah, I like, I like to read people or try to read the room. You say it's on your face. I don't, I don't, I've never seen it to be on your face. Well, and you, and speaking of just the back end of our relationship, it's just, I don't, like I said, I don't have my guards up with you. Like, we, we started a relationship at work, and it was like I would always come to you for advice. You know what I'm saying? If something was heavy on my heart or on my mind, I'm like, I got to holler at Dom a lot. You know what I'm saying? So our relationship always been that big brother, little sister type vibes to where I've never had my, I don't have to have my guard up with you. I don't have to uh, be tough. I don't have to watch what I say. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to worry about if he going to tell somebody. Like, so, like, like I was saying, me being nervous, me going back to being nervous t while talking to you because it's effortless. And then we could be talking for hours and then I'll be crying. Then we get all off into some deep stuff. But at the end of the day, I, I value your opinion. And I, you know what I'm saying? And I listen to what you say. Did, why, did it ever come out weird to you that I didn't try to holler at you? I think maybe that was one of the reasons why we clicked because of course, I'm used to people always yeah. trying to talk to me, but it was like, like you ain't even, you ain't care. Like you know, you was just doing your job, doing your work. That's why you know. And after so long with you not saying nothing to me or nothing, that's why I approached you because I'm like, let me check his temperature, and then it just, it just, it just became what it was. Like <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> who this nigga think he is not to nah. say nothing to me type no, because cause everybody wanted you. Yeah, but that's the, that type of stuff, you got to understand, growing up all your life and somebody always trying to talk to you, it's like, you know what I'm saying? I, I want to talk to somebody who don't want to talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't, like, if you, I don't know, maybe it's, it's crazy, but, like, if, I don't, I, I, don't, I don't like people always trying to talk to me. You know what I'm saying? Because I expect that. Or, and if you're going to do it, then do it the right way. Like, these these men these days. What's the right way? Like, I mean, me personally, I want somebody to ask me how I'm doing today. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, like check my mental, make sure I'm good. Show some more, show more interest than just what you see. Like, first thing, yo ass is fat. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you dick. Or you know, like that that shit's played out. That shit is old. Like that that doesn't that doesn't grab female's attention. Because yeah. we know that. We wake up with it every day. Yeah. I know what my potential. I know, you know what I'm saying? I know I know what I'm walking out the house with. To the point where dudes at the job, you, we were so cool that people used to think we messed around. And I'm like, yo, I, we literally not attracted to each other. We rock with each other. Like, you got to learn how to build relationships with people beyond what you see on their face. And you get to know a person inside, you be like, man, this is a dope person I love. Definitely. Now, we have, haven't been as close since we, you know, haven't had the job to lean on. Right. To, uh, see each other every day. Yeah. Spend most of our day with each other at work. And a lot of that is due to life, I get yeah. it. But you still, I mean, every once in a while, we'll hear each other, like, how you doing? Yeah, Whatever. definitely. You know, when I see you doing your thing, I, you know, shoot a text every now and again just to check on you. But, you know, that's, I, I honestly like relationships like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, we was cool. We were cool. We were close. And then life happens. But I'm not mad. A lot of females, like, you don't talk to them in so long. It's like, you acting funny or you this or you that. Like, I know we adults. We, you know, everybody going through something. That don't mean, like, we gonna pick right back up where we left off. Whenever I see you, gonna pick right back up where we left off. Like, hmm. Yeah. I would often worry about you or worry about what, you know, I get asked about you all the time. Yeah. Worry about what you going through now. What's going yeah. But. You know, like I said, we've had a lot of talks or whatever. At some time, at some point, you got it. It starts to wear on you so much that it's like, I don't know what to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I can't. I can only say certain things to you, and 
you do what you want to. I'm always going to love you. Right. But you got to let her live. Yeah. You got to let her. And then you don't always want to come off as the preachy preacher because I don't judge nothing. Right. I just don't want to see you hurt no more. Yeah. That's the thing with me. And it, and it, it started to bother me so much that I was like, yo, I. Yeah, I, I, I've always been the type of person that you could tell me something, but ultimately I want to figure it out for myself. Yeah. I want to have been through that experience to know and that I've been through that experience and how not to move the next time. So yeah, I'm a little hard-headed when it comes to certain stuff. Like I listen, but I ain't listening. Yeah. So you know what you want now, as far as me and the type of man that approach you have? Uh, um, I still don't know. You still trying to figure it out. I'm in it, but I'm at this point now that I'm not even. I don't even care no more. Like, I don't care. Like that. I I was in a seven year relationship with a person that I have a child with, and I've been knowing since the sixth grade. Like I'm more so focused on building a bond, a friendship bond with this man that I, I could care less about. I mean, not not saying that's not that's why I'm not moving on, but just moving forward, like, you got to start with a, a solid foundation or that shit's going to crumble. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not interested in jumping right into a relationship anymore. I want to get to, I want to build a bond to where even after that, we so cool that that, you know what I'm saying? We still able to function and move around. We still able to respect each other. We're still able to, if it's co-parent without all the drama, like we still able to still have a, a a good solid relationship without the sex. You know what I'm saying? Like after some relationships after so long, <clears throat> it's it it's bitter. Like I ain't I don't want no bitter relationship with nobody. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I ain't I ain't trying to do that. So when I'm I'm in a stage right now where I'm healing because in my last relationship I felt like I poured so much into something and and it, nobody was feeling my cup. You know what I'm saying? And and he not to say that um he's a horrible person because he's not like he's a great provider like that's my that's my friend. You know what I'm saying? That's that's somebody that I've been knowing for a lot of my life. Um so I'll never bad talk him or say anything negative about him. I know, I knew the type of person that I was getting into a relationship when I got into a relationship. I took all that on, you know what I'm saying? So anything about him, I, I took that on knowing this was him. Not trying to change him, but hopefully thinking over time he would change. I'm not gonna force it. So it, it got to the point where we needed to figure, we need to figure stuff out on our own. You know what I'm saying? Like you lose yourself in a relationship. A lot of women lose themselves in a relationship, start to second guess themselves in relationships. You know what I'm saying? Because we're no longer focused on us. We're more invested in our families. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's what I did. Like I stopped thinking about what I wanted because what I wanted didn't matter. I was trying, I needed to do what was good for the family as a whole. In my mind, but yeah, that doesn't work out. Nah, you, y'all, it has to be like equally yoked. You know what I'm saying? You gotta, as much as I'm pouring into you, you gotta pour into me. You know what I'm saying? We gotta be on the same page about anything. We have to, I mean, everything. We have to be in a space to where we want to grow. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't be stuck in the same place for years because you're never going to go anywhere. I feel like in seven years, I should have been married. Not that I wasted my time, but all that time just, just went past. You know what I'm saying? You look up and it's one year, and it's two years, and it's three years, and it's seven years. And you look back like, what besides this family? You got, you know what I'm saying? Like, what, what else can you stand on? Rearranged how I move, you know what I'm saying? Us women, a lot of women, we rearrange how we move just to please somebody else or make sure they still doing what they doing, but we didn't cut out a whole bunch of shit that we doing. You when you you cut out a whole bunch of stuff, and speaking for all women, like you were like one, not well, not all women, mm -hmm. but women in general, 
you cutting out stuff that you want to do or you you're becoming somebody else to be this person for that person or you think they want you to be yeah or whatever or you think you have to be right and if that person proposes to you at that time and you say yes that don't mean you're ready right you 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 may be excited to be married but you don't know that you didn't gave up so much of yourself right right yeah you know you're absolutely right um i i feel like marriage is is something that's it's, it's, it's serious you know what I'm saying like it's serious and it's sacred and you don't play about marriage you, you don't you can't like when this tie, when y'all tied together as one that's what it is like y'all gotta stand on that no cheating no you know what I'm saying like whatever y'all deal with y'all deal with inside your household and I feel like you can't just get up and walk away from a marriage. You're not supposed to just get up and walk away from a marriage. Y'all both y'all supposed to work on it, but you just can't take stuff. So nah, I I, I don't I don't know. I want to be married, but I ain't. I don't feel like I'm ready yet. Yeah, uh, look. In a sense, of, I don't think. Well, okay, we can be ready for it, but we're not ready for it. If that makes sense, like. You like, think you want a child, but you, go ahead. What you about to Because you're married, right? Yeah. So, like, when you proposed, was y'all both ready, or was it something that y'all had to get ready for? I was ready in the sense of wanting to be married. I wasn't ready for what it came with. Mm. I wasn't ready. Right. Inside myself. Mm. Like dudes, we have this thing where we think, of, well, I'm gonna just speak for me. Right. I had this thing where I thought like, I don't cheat. What more could you want? I'm mm. a good man or I go to work, I do the, nah. I it's had a lot, it's, it's way more than that. It's uh, dying to yourself. Dying to, and that, that don't mean lose yourself. That mean you have to be willing to compromise and come down on your pride sometime you mm. know, in order to make this thing work. So it hurt too, both sides. Mm -hmm. To me, this is what it means. Like we both have to be willing to compromise. That means you have to die to yourself some because it's not going to be all your way. Right. But in the grand scheme of things, this works out for the greater good because some things that you say, I don't normally do, this, nah, that ain't high rock. That might actually grow you. Mm -hmm. That might, that person, how they're trying to get you to see things was probably for the greater good of you. And, me, once I started opening up to those things, I felt like we started being better. Even when you talk about little things, like I'm not the type that just want to sit up and just talk about shit I don't know about. Mm -hmm. Like if you want to come home and talk about your friends or whatever they got, I, I'm just kind of like, uh, uh, uh. but now me getting out of my, uh, me getting out of the way mm -hmm. and realizing that she just want a friend, bro. If she not, if she can't talk to you, and f first of all, you should be, you should feel privileged that somebody wants to talk to you about some things. Like right. they could talk to anybody else. She's an attractive woman. She could talk to anybody, mm -hmm. but she wants to talk to you. She wants, she's picked you to be her best friend. Right. And you can't sit up and just gossip with her a little bit. Or, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, just uh, I wasn't ready. And I'm still not, uh, you know, like you think you're ready for a kid. You're not ready for that because mm. we don't have a pamphlet to it. Right. Everything is, uh, it has its day. own, huh? So a lot, I mean, for real, just taking stuff day by day, learning every something new every day. And being open, knowing that you don't know. Right. Which is weird to say, knowing that you don't know. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Knowing yeah, that knowing you don't, you don't know, know. Uh, that's, that's what helped me. Too. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I go into almost everything being like, oh, okay, I don't know. Mm -hmm. That way I'm willing to open and grow because uh, me in a natural state, I'm a arguer. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to try to debate until I win. I think that's me too. Yeah. Like I always got something to say. And I might know that you're right, but I'm going to spin it to, yeah, I'm going to spin it to where I'm going to come out somewhere. I figured out why I was like that. I'm gonna ask you, my reason for being like that is because I wasn't good at a lot of things. 
But mouthpiece and being able to like talk my way out of it or talk my mm -hmm. way in it or talk, I was good at that. And just looking at the people around me, seeing how good they were and what they get praised for and all of that, I wanted something like that of my own. So I'm gonna win this argument. <laughs> I'm gonna win, you know what I'm saying? I just realized that probably a few weeks. Why do you feel like you had the spirit of manipulation so heavy? I don't know. I ain't never really sat and thought about it, but I, I don't know. Like, let me sit in that real quick. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I'm always right because sometimes I'll argue and I know I'm wrong, but I don't know. I don't know why I go back and forth. Like I, I gotta have the, I don't have to have the last word, but I don't, just like you said, I, I feel like I got a a, a a nice mouthpiece. I can make some, I can make you believe something that I know ain't true. So maybe that's what it is. Yeah. And I want to win. I want to, I want to win the argument. Win. Yeah. So. Would you say you still like that? Cause I'm not like that no more. Um. In certain situations, I will go back and forth. And then sometimes it's just me being petty, trying to see if I can get you upset. Mm -hmm. In certain situations, I go back and forth. And then a lot of people, when you listen to them, they don't be making no sense. Like, they just be talking, and I'll challenge that. Like, what you know what I'm saying? Like, or they, they so stuck on what they believe, they not trying to hear nothing else. Mm -hmm. So I'll make you hear something else. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's how I be doing it, because a lot of people that if I do have an argument, which is rare, or going back and forth, it's because this is what they saw or what they heard. But, and then I'm not a biased person, so it could be a yeah. situation to where this person feel this way and this person feel this way. I'm not taking no sides. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna try to explain to you why this person feel this way, and I'm gonna explain to them why you feel this way. So then, you know what I'm saying, maybe y'all opinions will change, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know why I argue or go back and forth. Maybe at the end of the day, I just want to have the last word. I want to win. Yeah, so that's, that's, so that's bad in a relationship. No, yeah, definitely. And, and these are, that amongst other things or are, are things that I'm realizing that I have a problem with now in my adult life, like, and that I need to check and I need to chill out or I need to figure it out. I'm, I'm an overthinker. I, I, I play a situation out a thousand times, different situations and scenarios out. I think too I overthink things too much. Um, I shut down quick. Uh, what else? I'm a procrastinator, uh, but I still get things done. And maybe that's why I procrastinate. Like, you know, you gotta do something, but you wait until the last minute. To, my timing is horrible. What else? I feel like, honestly, I need to see a therapist. Like, I wanna start therapy because I have a lot of trauma, old trauma that I do not, that I have not dealt with. You know what I'm saying? And, and uh, I don't know, I just push a lot of stuff down for, for, for a long time. And I feel like I even do it now. And I sometimes, right now, I just wanna let it go. I just wanna let it go and let it out and it just leave it where it's at. Cause it's, it's not doing me no good pushing it down. It just brings stuff to a boiling point and then it, I do some stuff that I regret. Or you know what I'm saying, that, that that's not me. It's, it's, it's crazy how God works. Cause I was, when you were saying all of that, I'm like, I'm about to ask her, what do you think about therapy? Because Definitely. you're, you're, you have a, I was going to use that exact word. You have a lot of undealt with trauma. I do. And in, in any type of relationship, that stuff bleeds over on that person that you're dealing with. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Even the stuff, I don't even know if you talked out loud about the, the, the emotions you felt about losing not only your brother, but your child's father. Mm -hmm. And do, dudes that I felt like from talking to you, you really were into yeah. and losing them. Um, he taught me a lot, uh, Duran Biggs. Like that was the first street dude that I dealt with in my teenage adult life. So 
he taught me a lot of stuff. He taught he taught me how to think, not just one way. He taught me how to uh, be aware of stuff, like street stuff. Like in a sense, he laced my boots. You know what I'm saying? He he made me how I am today with certain stuff. So yeah, I um and I was with him for a, a long living together and with him for a minute. So that was that was a, a, a hard pill to swallow too. And I don't think I've dealt with it. Like a lot of stuff I haven't dealt with. So yeah. I I I keep saying that I wanna do therapy because I've been in situations that I feel like uh, a a girl should you know shouldn't be in. Not just street stuff. But I didn't have somebody physically die on top of me trying to save my life you know what i'm saying so and i and i've never like said it or spoke it out loud um only to my best friend who was in the car with me that's another situation that i've just you know what i'm saying push it down <clears throat> so yeah i feel like that a, a therapist will be a great outlet for me especially where i am today like i'm realizing and recognizing a lot of stuff on my journey you know what i'm saying and I feel like me saying things out, I've always been the type of person that even if I'm in a relationship with you, I'm a, I have to say what I feel or how I feel and then I could be done with it. But I have to say it out loud. If I don't say it out loud to you, you know what I'm saying? Like it's gonna always be an issue. But once I say it out loud, then I'm done with it. Yeah. And some stuff I just haven't said out loud. Yeah. You, you've been in a lot of situations you shouldn't have been in. Yeah, I mean, definitely. nobody should be in some of the situations you've been in. And even talking about, like, um, without saying names, like, to, I remember you being with a person and you holding it, drugs on, doing this and doing that. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking to you like, yeah, they might like you, you might like them, but somebody who loves you, somebody who wants to protect you, wouldn't put you in a position like that to be holding that type of stuff. Yeah, but and then it's that comes with where I grew up. You know what I'm saying? Where not I wasn't in the slums or you know what I'm saying? I wasn't in the ghetto. Like I've always lived in nice houses. I always had running water, you know what I'm saying? Food, everything like that. But it was just so me being invested in the streets that led me or got me in certain situations because I wanted to be street smart. You know what I'm saying? I just didn't, I, I've always just seen like females or males talk about girls being goofy. I didn't want to be a goofy. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to yeah. know the street side of things and then the book smart. I wanted to have all that so I could turn it off or turn it on. I know how to deal with certain situations. I know how to, you know, handle certain situations. I know what should be done, what shouldn't be done. And and when getting in a lot of, and then another thing that, that adds to that is the men that are attracted to me for some reason are street niggas, drug dealers, gang bangers, I don't know. I don't call them. I don't go looking for them. I don't, you know what I'm saying? That, that, that is who is, I'm not saying no other dudes are attracted to me, but that is who are naturally attracted to me that be on a foot chase for me. Like, you know what I'm saying? They don't give up. And then I get in those relationships and learn something new, you know what I'm saying? Or take something new away new or feel like I'm obligated to do this because I'm supposed to hold it down. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm supposed to be the rider. This is what this is what they do or what I've heard or seen. This is what they're supposed to do. I think that's a key word that like what you just said, rider. I think that's a key word that a lot of women hear and be like, I have to do this. Cause we use it a lot, ride or die bitch. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And it confuses you with what you should accept. Right. Cause you shouldn't in no sense of that statement do I feel like my wife should die, ride or die with me. Yeah. People who take that like literal, like she should be in the car with me doing while I'm doing whatever I'm doing. And I would never want to put her in a position like that. Go ahead. As adults, 
we see the bigger picture now. But then, you know, as a kid trying to figure it out, as a teenager, or just seeing what we've seen on TV or what we've seen mm -hmm. our homegirls mm -hmm. doing, we thought we were supposed to be doing that. It made sense. Yeah. Now it don't make no sense. Yeah. But then it made sense. They attracted, so the, the street dudes was attracted to you. You wasn't attracted to them necessarily. I just felt like me personally, my biggest thing is feeling like I'm protected. And if I fall short, you got my back. So a sense of security and to always be protected. You know what I'm saying? I felt, I, not that I was going after them, but they were attracted to me and they always had the money. You know what I'm saying? They was always feared. Or you know what I'm saying? People wouldn't fuck with you or mess with you. You know what I'm saying? Because they were who they were. You know what I'm saying? So that's where I always felt more protected and I always felt more secure. You know what I'm saying? Like, they were coming after me, but I wasn't shooting them down. You know what I'm saying? Because that's where I felt protected. Like, I have to, in a relationship, I have to feel like I'm protected. When you say protected, what are you talking about? Like, like I like I'm untouchable. Like you know what I'm saying. And even though it it is what it is logically, like something can happen to me or whatever. But just to feel like this man won't let any harm come my way at all. Like I don't have to worry about you know like trying me. I don't have to worry about anything because I felt like he could protect me. Like I felt like most of the people that I dealt with, um, I felt protected. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like they were untouchable. And in a sense, they were touched, you know, they could be touched. Cause you know, they some people weren't here, but that's how I felt. It is crazy how a woman can feel protected in a relationship that When you're with that person alone, sometimes you don't feel so protected. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, they cause more harm to you than they do. Like, you, yeah, you, you protect me outside from these people or whatever. But who's protecting me from you? Because when you get in your zones and stuff, you. I don't. I don't feel like I've ever been into a relationship to where I felt like I was being done the worst mm -hmm. or wrong. It's, it might be messed up to say, but <laughs> cheating ain't no, like I'm not, I'm not automatically turned off by that stuff. Cause I, I know that men cheat, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know how to make it make sense, but that's not a deal breaker for me. I can, I can, not deal with, I'm not going to say deal with a person cheating, but I'm not just going to be, all right, it's a wrap. That ain't even how, what I even meant. I'm talking about threatened, threats on your life because they feel like they can control you because they had the money. And oh, money. Okay, okay, okay. So, and you're so down with them, you don't even realize this person is against, like, they, they, they with you, but they're controlling you too at the yeah. same time. Yeah, no, like, no, definitely. I feel like um, men can be very controlling in that sense. Men that I've been with have, can be very controlling in that sense. Um, that, um, I don't know how to explain that. When I was in a relationship with Biggs, he was very controlling. Like not uh, want me to go places, like want to have me put up, but I had everything that I wanted. You know what I'm saying? Like I had everything that I wanted and I didn't care. And you know what I'm saying? Now I look back and I see like, it, he was very controlling and and he used money as in things and objects as, as the root of that. But I never felt like scared, you know what I'm saying? I never felt like I needed somebody to protect me from him. 
because after so long with being with a person, you know them. You know exactly what they gonna do. You know how they move. But yeah, money, money. A lot of dudes use money to control. They use money and material things to control their women. Yeah, you got two two little girls, right? Yep. Uh, <coughs> uh, sixteen and seven. Sixteen and seven. Yep. Uh, one who's kind of same mommy's lifestyle or whatever, right? Kind of not really um, been there, but kind of, you know what I'm saying? She, she, she I was a, at work a lot, a whole lot with Maya, like to the point where sometimes I feel like I missed out or I could have did more. But at that time, I was so focused on making money and making sure she had everything and making sure everything was done, you know, like I could do everything that I, I wanted and needed to do that I didn't realize how absent. Did that make sense? Oh. Yeah. Hello? Where's God? She at Auntie House. I'm, Mom, I'm doing this interview. I'm almost done. Where was we at? My kid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So with Maya, I was, I walked across the stage literally pregnant and nobody knew because I was hiding it. Mm -hmm. So with her, it was like I graduated. I had moved into a, my apartment with my best friend at 17 because I knew my grandma was not having that. Like she, we had to graduate from school, you know what I'm saying? And and at that point, you know what I'm saying, I wanted to move out into my own. I didn't want her to be mad at me, you know what I'm saying? So I finished school, and then I found me a place, and then I told her I was pregnant. But even though she knew, because she was my grandma, so she knew before I told her. And that's just like, oh, I already knew you was pregnant. You always coming in the house, going to bed, and da 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 So yeah, with Tamaya, I had jumped right in my bag. Like, I had, I felt like I had, I, have a responsibility now so I was working I've always had like two jobs like always even and with even, even with the men that I've dealt with I've never not worked you know what I'm saying like I didn't have to but I did you worked hard too yeah and, and you're not with, one of those people who just showed up to work and yeah no nah, I'm not lazy by any means if I if I do something I do it to the best of my ability and I don't care what it is like yeah. I'm gonna put 110 in it and I need to start doing that with myself because I, I do that I do that so much with other people and their businesses and stuff like that. Like if I really put poured that into me and, and my businesses, I, unstoppable. But um with Maya, like I said, I was 17, 18 when I had her and I jumped right into my bag. So and then with me being so young, I felt like as long as she had nice clothes and whatever she wanted. She was good, but it was the time that really, you know what I'm saying, that really mattered to her for real. You know what I'm saying? So I try to do it differently when I had Sky, like be more at home. And But I'm a natural worker. You know what I'm saying? Like I have to be doing something. I just can't be sitting around. You know what I'm saying? I have to be, I have to do something. So... I feel like I'm still making up for that, but she knows. Like my Maya knows. Yeah. yeah. You've had real conversations with her about like, cause it yeah. could be like uh, you got the new, not the new kid, Sky, but it's just. Def they, no, that is definitely that because it's like, oh, now nah, she, you got Sky, yeah. she getting all attention and all this and that and that. But when it was, you know what I'm saying? So it's definitely that, and I have to have conversations with her because. With my kids, I be doing gentle parenting because I knew how it was being yelled at all the time, you know, and the hard, the hardness of growing up. Like, uh, I be gentle, trying to be gentle with my kids, even though it don't work all the time. But Maya, she's very outspoken and she's very, she got her own mean personality so I have to talk to her like like this what's up you know what I'm saying but with Sky I still 
tiptoe and be gentle with a lot of stuff. But yeah, I definitely feel like she feels some type of way because of the age gap, they two years apart. Has Maya ever checked you? Not in a sense of disrespecting you, but hit you with some stuff that you like? Yeah. Damn. Yeah, but, and I let her, we have, we talked about it. I let her say what she got to say and we talk about it because I want her to be able to talk to me. You know what I'm saying? I want her to be able to feel like she can come and tell me something or she ain't got to sneak, you know, and hide. And not, I'm not trying to be her friend, no, but I want her to be able to talk to me. And she is very uh, private, closed out, secluded. Like she don't do a lot of stuff. She don't talk to a lot of people. Like she's just, she a loner for real. The sky's the total opposite. We can balance that though, right? Uh, Cause I hear a lot of people say they don't want to be their kid's friend. They want to be, I'm your parent. No, no, no we, can your, yeah. we can definitely, we can balance it. Cause you said it. you're not trying to be her friend. I'm not trying to be her friend in the sense that sometimes she might say something and I'll be like, I am not your friend exactly. because- Exactly, got it. Cause you know, at that point I feel like you crossed the line. We cool. But I ain't your friend to where you going to be feeling comfortable saying or doing just anything. Yeah. You got to, I had to, I had to cross, make that line, make sure she don't cross it. Mm. But yeah, I, I take her, you want to go to, like just last week, they had a little party that they wanted to go to. I took them and I sat in the parking lot, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, until it was over. But she don't, like, she don't do a lot of, like, she don't ask to do a lot of stuff. Mm. She don't want, she, she wants the bare minimum of stuff, so. If she asks, I'll be for it. I actually want her to get out more. There's one thing to acknowledge things that you need to do better, even for yourself, and there's that's cool. But after a while, acknowledgement is not enough. You have to move on it. I do. What does Ashley need to do going for a demi close out? Because I know you got to go. No, but if you if you really think about it, like a lot of the stuff that's happening now, I've been talking about it for years with that's boutiques, nice. with all this stuff, like I've been having blueprints and plans for years. Yeah. And now everybody is doing it. You know what I'm saying? Like I could have, but that just go back to me not lacking that confidence in myself that I can get it done. Especially the boutique. I remember I used to be on the shoe boutique you used to talk about. I used to be like, do do it. You got people rock with you, whether they don't rock with you or not. Right. You know what I'm saying? They gonna come. They gonna, you know, you got style and all of that stuff, do it. But yeah, you definitely don't put as much into yourself as you put into other people. Yeah. And I don't feel like you can enjoy life like that. Yeah. Just trying to please other people. Uh, what I found with my problem was with being, I was scared. People have always told me who I am, who I'm supposed to be. I'm just more scared that I might disappoint you so I don't go. Mm. Well, maybe I'm not who you say I am. What if I'm not that person y'all say I am? So that's what would keep me from moving forward, but I can't do that no more. Yeah. Because I had a near-death experience. And I said, what if I left my people? What if I left my kids? Yeah. Besides some uh, life insurance money. Yeah. Well, what are they gonna say about me at the funeral? God gave me a gift yeah. to be able to talk to people and I'm not using it, I'm taking it for granted mm -hmm. from what people tell me, you know what I'm saying? So that's why I felt like I I need to pick up on it or next time he'll actually take my life because mm -hmm. why are you there? What I what need do I have for you on the earth if you just gonna be there existing? Right. You know what I mean? So Damn. I think if you, if, if I'm giving you these signs, I keep taking things from you and you like, why? Why? Well, I'm trying to get you to answer. Mm -hmm. There's there's no wonder that everybody, there's been millions of people, billions of people who have gone through the same thing that you went through, but you survived. Mm -hmm. Why did you survive? Right. Because you're the one who's supposed to do something. You're here for a change, you're here for a purpose, but some of us take that for granted and I'm not gonna take that for granted no more. That's why I move like I move and I encourage you to do that with your influence. Figure it out. Yeah. Take it serious. Yeah. Just take the time you need to yourself to really figure out what God wants from you and what 
you do it because he he don't want nothing for me, for you that you can't do. Right. And you know you got it. Yeah. You know who you are, but I don't think you know who you are. Yeah. I think I doubt myself a lot. <clears throat> I think I let. I let other people determine or tell me what I can and can't do. But that's, I mean, that's a part of my journey right now. I'm realizing the things that I need to get done and I'm trying to get them done. I'm going to get them done. I try. Hey, some of us get mad about people doubting us, but we actually use that as a crutch. We hope they doubt us in the back of our mind just so I ain't not do it. Well, you ain't think I could do it anyway. So. Mm. That's our way of running from it. But mark us out, please. Hmm, let's see. Well, mark, mark. Every, we all got a gift that God gave us. We need to quit procrastinating and use it because life is short before you look up. So much time has gone past, and I'm going to take my own advice. If it's something that you want to do, get it done. Mm -hmm. Stop second-guessing yourself, because you got it. Got a prayer for us? Yes. Lord, I want to thank you for this discussion with my brother today. I want to thank you for helping me on this healing journey. Um... I want to ask you to look after all my family and friends. That's right. All the sick and shut in. Um, guide my steps. Order me. And um, That's just, just thank, just I just want to say thank you for allowing me to breathe and be alive so long. Um, Amen. Amen. Yo, the fact that you can still believe in God after all that you've been through says a lot. Definitely. I never, I, I might flinch, but that's it. Yeah. I might want to think or want to question, but it's always a bigger picture. Um, I thank God for being able to share this space with you. This is a privileged position for me. I thank God that you ain't out of my life, that you are still here. We may not be talking to each other every day, but you still hold the same spot in my heart that you've always held. No doubt. You're always going to be my sister, and I'm always going to love you. The goal is to leave a lasting imprint on their minds and their hearts. We pray you've been indelibly marked. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate you. I'm glad we didn't get ratchet.